But when he was sent, he went. He was faithful where God had called him to be, where his father had positioned him before. And when he watched those sheep, he would defend those sheep with his life. He would fight the lion and he would fight the bear. All of these things being preparation for what God is going to take him to next. Sometimes you might find yourself in peculiar places that look very different to what you have envisioned God called you into. But it's preparation time. It's training camp. It's day one of development. And you are there at boot camp. Going through things. Humbling yourselves in ways. Being beat down in some ways. Things that are taking pride out of you. Things that are testing you. Things that are showing you. You have a temper. Things that are showing you. You get impatient. Things that are showing you. You got some issues you got to straighten out. These are some of the things we deal with along the way. It's not just you. It's all of us. Anybody lift your hand that never had an issue? No hands going. So David arrives on the battle scene. And he's been sent by his father. Now in his road of destiny, there's going to be a giant. Destiny and giants go together. We have an adversary. We have an enemy. It doesn't seem like, it doesn't matter how many times you preach that. Christians forget that. It doesn't matter how many times you're reminded. Something goes wrong a week later and someone is still saying, why is God doing this to me? And if God really loved me, then, then, then why is he afflicting me in such a manner? Why, why is this issue rising up in my marriage? You have an adversary. And it's about time you stop blaming God and everybody else for the fact that you've got a devil to fight. You can point the finger everywhere. But the fact is, there's a giant in your way. And you've got to overcome that giant. You've got to face down that giant. You've got to come to the place in faith where you are ready to move at that giant and overcome him in the name of the Lord. This is not going to be something you're going to be able to do in the flesh. This is going to be something you have to do in the spirit. This is going to be something you have to do with faith in God. Because destiny will bring you to things that are bigger than you. Destiny will bring you to mountains that you can't move with your own strength. Problems that you can't overcome. You don't have the understanding. You don't have the wisdom. You don't have the patience. You don't know how to pray like that. All of these things that will test us. But will cause us to turn our eyes on Jesus. Amen. So that when David looks at that giant, he doesn't come at that giant in everything he is, he comes at that giant in who God is. Amen. And he continues to face that thing, run at that thing, and conquer that thing, because that thing stood in the way of his walk with God. What stands in the way of your walk with God today? What is getting in your way? And this is really where I wanted to get to this morning. What is getting in your way? What is the obstruction? What is the mountain? And if you're still finding yourself in the place where you're blaming God for your problem, you're going to have a hard time overcoming this battle or this fight. Because you need to know God is for you and not against you. That he would say, he, God said they would gather against you, but not by him. He's the one that is with you. He's the one that is helping you. He's the one that is fighting for you. And you can't do this thing without him. 
This isn't time to get bitter against God. This is time to love him like never before. This is time to worship like never before. This isn't when you draw back. This is when you press in. Because when you come to such a significant door in your destiny like David did that day, there will be pressure. There will be resistance. There will be a choice. And it will be the choice that you make will determine whether you draw back or you continue to uncover and move into what God has called you to be. David was called to be king, but a giant stood in his path. And had he run from that giant on that day, I, I don't know what the story would have been for David. But that giant that the enemy had said, God was also going to use to propel David to the place that God had anointed him for, where eventually he would arrive in the place of the kingdom and ruling as the king. David was sent, and he went in the way that God had called him to go. And which way are you going this morning? The Bible said, there is a broad gate, a large way. And that's the way that leads to destruction. That's the way that leads to death. But there is a straight gate and a narrow path. And that's the one that leads to life. Amen. Proverbs 14 and 12 said, there's a way which seems right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Yeah. Funny. It says the same thing two chapters later. You don't see the Bible repeat itself like this very often. But the exact same thing two chapters later in 16 and 25. There is a way that seems right unto a man. I said it seems right. Yeah. It seems right. And so you can try and justify yourself in it. And you can make excuses for it because it seems right. It's the way that seems right unto a man. But that's the fleshly man. That's the carnal man. That's not the born again man that is being led of the spirit of God. That's not talking about the man that is in pursuit of his destiny. That's the man that is listening to the words of the giant rather than the spirit of God that is on the inside of him saying I'm with you to conquer that giant. There is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So you can just keep on going your own way, but you need to know this morning what the end thereof is going to be. It is the ways of death. This life is over far too quickly. Even if you live to a very good old age, life is still just but like a vapor. Here today and gone tomorrow. But in this light, God wants to use you. God wants to bless you. God wants to show himself with you. He wants to do miracles in and through your life. He wants to show you that he could take you places you would have never imagined. He would use you in ways you never thought possible. It was the same thing with the prophet Jeremiah when he began to uncover that seed of destiny that was inside of him. And God began to call him into what he was called into now. He looks at himself and he says, oh God, how can I go? Uh, how can I speak? Uh, I, I don't know what to say. I don't have the words. And God says, don't be afraid of the people. Don't fear their faces. I've put my word in you. You're going to go and you're going to say what I told you to say. You're going to speak what I told you to speak. You're going to do what I told you to do. And God is going to do it. It's going to take you beyond your limitations. It's going to take you beyond what you thought was possible. That's the destiny inside of you. David was sent and he went in the way that God called him to go. I said it before, I'll say it again. This was not David's greatest giant. 
Goliath was not David's greatest giant. David would deal with rejection. David would deal with lust. And they would die a lot harder than Goliath did. They would not fall as quick as Goliath fell. And there would be times where David would have to fall on his face and say, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew in me a right spirit. I've gone in a wrong way. And I repent. Help me get back in alignment in that way of life. Help me to come back into that narrow road, God. Help me to come back into the path of destiny that you've called me to. I've listened to too many other voices. I've given in to too many fleshly desires. And he would fall on his face before God, humbling himself and repenting. But David would also be told of that he fulfilled the will of God for his life. It was not without mistakes. It was not without failures. Because of a repentant heart, however, whenever he would go in the wrong way, God would get him back in that right path. Some people won't humble themselves like that. Some people will hold a grudge for year after year after year. And so it's 10 years later and they're still saying, I won't go up to that church because I didn't like what the pastor said. Now they don't need the church. Now they don't need the body. All they need is channel whatever with Joel Osteen on it. And they think they got the church in their living room. But I got to tell you something today. The church is not in your living room. The church is in the church. The church is in the church. The church is a body. The church is made up of a collective group. God's people that he assembles together. And this is why the scripture said not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together as God begins to collect the parts of his body and bring us together into the house of God where he would manifest his power. Where collective power and collective anointing would flow. Amen. The Bible talked about the prodigal son. This is where, as I began to prepare, I didn't really expect the Lord to take me to. But it's for somebody today. We mostly know, mostly everybody in here probably knows the story of the prodigal son. The father had two sons who served him. But when one came of age, he began to listen to other voices. And wrong things took him in a wrong way. I'm going to say that again. Wrong things took him in a wrong way. It's very easy to justify things in this life. It's easy to justify things that we know somewhere deep inside that we ought not to be doing. But we need to know that wrong things will take us in a wrong way. Mm -hmm. Because this son is called the prodigal because, not because he stayed in father's house, but because he left father's house. Mm -hmm. And he wasted everything that God had given him, or that his father had delivered to him. He wasted it all. Everything. Everything. And you might be here this morning with your head down, thinking, I blew it bad. Yeah, well, he wasted everything. Everything. Everything that was given to him of his father, he wasted it all on riotous living. He took what was precious of his father, and he took it to the world. He took something that was given to him, something that was earned, something that was precious, something that was valuable, and he threw it away. But when there came a famine in the land, and he had spent all that he had to spend, the Bible said he finds himself living with the hogs, living with the pigs, joined to a citizen of that country. 